morning YouTube world um, wearing a yellow cloth cap today from the Unpost Rat um, channeling my inner pff, channeling my inner May wet weather riding because that's exactly what the Rat is all about so today's ride after yesterday's rest day is uh is hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and a half. Well, apart from the hour that we're gonna do this afternoon slash this evening. So this morning's ride after yesterday's rest day, a complete day of rest. I can't believe I can't believe how good I feel this morning. So we've come out, we've had um we've had some coffee. Yes that's right, coffee and a Twix. I know I didn't have any Mars bars. We're going out to Minke. Minke. Yeah, I'd give you a hundred pound if you're English and you can pronounce that one. Um, or American or wherever you're from. So we're heading over to the Minke, also known as the Monkey. And um, it's basically a climb that goes up in steps. And the reason why I'm choosing it is because the efforts I'm doing today will be perfect to do on that climb. So it's one I do maybe, I don't know, I guess once a week. Yeah, once a week is, uh, is accurate. So I do it once a week, and it's the it's the it's the sprint, the zone four, two minutes recovery, not two minutes recovery. I mean zone two recovery at tree. Zone two recovery for 30 seconds and then back up. It's all on my Strava. If you want to see the the kind of in-depth stuff, um, it's all there for you to copy. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going on today. It's important, especially when. You know, this climb is only half an hour away to do some kind of warm up rather than just zone two. So what I did coming up this path is perfect because it's like 2% gradient. I just did a very casual ramp. So I went from like say, you know, 220 up to around 330, 340 watts. Now, it's obviously not long enough to get hurry up because I've only been on the road now for 18 minutes. So it's always good to keep in mind that although I've done that kind of little opener. When we do this first effort, my heart rate's not really going to respond. Although my power will be there, the heart rate won't be there. And because we're only doing four reps, the chances are it's not really going to feel as hard as it actually is. Alright, that's the uh, first part of today done, I suppose. Um, not bad. Uh, those four hill efforts, the first three were done on uh, the Monkey Hill. And then um, uh, that last one I had to do on the other hill, which is like, they're both in a dip. So the Monkey Hill is this side, and it's so hard to do it on that hill because it's really steep at the start, which is really good for my first two minutes. But then it flattens off like for maybe a minute and like you're there faffing about going into the big ring and it really upsets your rhythm. Um, it's good training though uh, to do it on something that pushes you outside your comfort zone. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna head home, uh, eat some food and um, then we're gonna jump on the turbo this evening. This is, um, this used to be the old railway line. Uh, there used to be like a colliery up here, and they used to mine some stuff, and uh, yeah, it, it's not used anymore. Now it's just uh, used for feeding horses. Wait, I can't work this. Oh, I'll, just, I'll just blur it out. So, done today's ride, and um... Forza and Latour making out the drink, and despite timeouts, he's gonna get over 18 seconds for him. I'm not gonna tell you what happens next, you'll have to watch it. That, that was actually, that was actually some ride by Richie Port, considering he's not um, done a lot recently. Uh, although I wasn't, 
I wasn't completely surprised by the Sky, the young Sky dude, uh, winning that stage of Romandy. So this weekend would be the Klondike Grand Prix for me, and I said in the other video the other day that um, that I wasn't riding it, and I thought it'd be quite interesting to explain to you why, because a lot of the time I say, you know, I'm not going to this race, I'm not doing this, so why aren't I doing it? A lot of it's to do with the selection process. Now, the selection process, far be it from me to comprehend, but it's probably a lot more complicated than I even know. So, so here's my spin on it. Here's my interpretation. If I was a, if I was running a cycling team, there'd be a few things I'd look at: the course, the weather, the uh, the form of certain riders, the fitness, what they've got, and uh, if if it's good for them long term and well if they can win the bike race in terms of this weekend the Klondike Grand Prix I did it last year and it's really quite well I wouldn't say hilly but it's lumpy uh, it's quite exposed uh, because it's on the coast but last year it ended in a bunch kick of around 30 to 40 riders it was a very reduced bunch now the only way that I can win from something like that is if I go solo which let's be honest, it's highly unlikely. Um, but there's plenty of other guys who can do what I can do on our team. I think that's the great thing about our team. Uh, and this isn't being like, oh, Joe Di Kondo, a brilliant team. You know, we have actually got quite a lot of strength and depth. Uh, and, you know, we've got lots of riders who can do lots of things. So I'm not going there. And also logistically, um, you know, it's a long way for me to go from from Slatley here in South Wales. It's a good five hour drive if I go direct, I'm guessing. So that's another reason why I'm not doing it. In terms of fitness, like you could you could be like in the best shape of your life, you know, but that, that doesn't mean that you get to ride. I think a lot of people uh, struggle to get their heads around that. But that, if you play football, if you play rugby, if you're in really good form, like if you're making like really um you know important tackles in games or, or or you're um you know you're assisting like big players if you're like like if you're Lionel Messi you'd be like playing week in week out because well you're world class and cycling doesn't work like that I mean you've got to rest at some point you've got to actually well sometimes you've got to skip races to train harder than the race itself does that make sense because you know there's a lot of wasted time going around races as well. There's that way to look at it. So the day before a race, you rest. Well, you do a pre-race ride. The day before that, you rest up. Then you do the race itself. So there's kind of three days there where you're not really doing anything. Obviously, you're doing the race. There's quite a lot of things that go into the selection process. And, you know, when it comes down to, like, a team manager and the other management, like the coach and what have you, you know, once they've had their say, and with data the way it is right now, like... It can tell a big story and you know you know who's in good form and who's not uh, and it's all about the long-term vision so like me not doing this race on the weekend is actually kind of good for me um, because dot 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 it's uh, yeah it's each their own it changes week in week out but um, but I'll have my time soon so don't panic people <laughs>